everybody. Hope you are doing well. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, Numbers chapter 30. We have a short chapter today, and I would say if I were to name this chapter, it would be Promise Keepers, Integrity Builders. Promise Keepers, Integrity Builders. God's going to just share with them really quickly about this idea of making a vow. Vows are very voluntary in the Old Testament, but if you were going to make a promise, you needed to keep your promise. You ever heard the phrase, I'm a man of my word? What that means is, is if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Integrity is very important to the Lord. We're going to jump into that in just a moment, but as always, if you like what we're doing here, make sure that you are liking this video, sharing this video, subscribing to the channel. If you're listening to this as a podcast, make sure you are leaving us a five-star review, and you're also letting people know as we are working hard to develop a community of people Man, we're just reading God's word every day. And I make you a promise, the more we dig, the more we find. And one of the ways you can dig is by going to our Facebook group. There, go to Facebook, type in Bible Breakdown Discussion. And I want to know today, what promise have you made that is hard to keep? What is a promise in your life that you've made that has been hard to keep? I can tell you many in my life, many times where I have committed to do something and it's been difficult to do. We used to have this old phrase, and I I don't know. It was this old phrase called an Indian giver. And it was this idea of a misconception because a lot of times when the settlers came over to the United States, what they would do was, is they would give, Indians would trade something, but what they would happen is later they would come back and they would take it back. And if you did a lot of research, you found out that actually what it was is Indians and their culture, they understood about giving and receiving things very differently. And it was more of, you never truly owned something, you borrowed it until it went to the next person, right? Well, the people from other countries who came in to settle in the United States, they didn't know that. So they thought an Indian giver was someone who would give you something, but then they would very easily come and take it back again. And this phrase was actually incorrect, but it was what was understood by that people group. Well, I don't know about you, but I've known people that I thought if I could describe their people group, <laughs> it would be someone you couldn't trust. It's like the idea of business is business. So in other words, it's this idea of in certain environments, I don't have to be trustworthy. In certain environments, I can you know, give away my integrity in order to make a buck or in order to get ahead. Well, God says, don't do that. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. If you say you're going to do something, then do it. If you're not going to do it, then don't commit to doing it, right? That seems so very common, but at the same time, if you think about it, somebody had to say it the first time. Someone had to say, commit to this the first time. And so we have right here the written record where God says the best way for you to do business with somebody else is by telling the truth. So I want us to read this together, and then we're going to see how this teaches us to trust in the Lord. You ready? Here we go. You got your NLT Bible open with me. We're going to read along. Numbers chapter 30, verse 1 says this. Then Moses summoned the leaders of the tribes of Israel and told them, This is what the Lord has commanded. A man who makes a vow to the Lord or makes a pledge under an oath must never break it. He must do exactly what he has said that he would do. For instance, if a young woman makes a vow to the Lord or a pledge under oath while she is still living with her father at her father's home, and her father hears the vow or pledge and does not object to it, then all her vows and pledges will stand. But if her father refuses to let her fulfill the vow or the pledge on the day he hears it, then all her vows and pledges will become invalid. The Lord will forgive her because her father would not let her fulfill them. Pause. So what this was is saying, when you're young, you don't always know what you're doing. So there are going to be people in your life that they hear this and go, ah, they're a little excited. Then it won't, then it won't work. That's a good thing. God says, have checks and balances in your life. Here you go, verse 6. Now, suppose a young woman makes a vow or binds herself to an impulsive pledge and later marries. If her husband learns of her vow or pledge and does not object on the day he hears it, her vow and pledge will stand. But if her husband refuses to accept her vow or impulsive pledge on the day he hears it, he nullifies her commitments. The Lord will forgive her. If, however, a woman or a widow is divorced, she must fulfill her vow and pledges. But suppose a woman is married and living in her husband's home, and when she makes a vow or binds herself with a pledge, if her husband hears of it and does not object to it, her vow or pledge will stand. But if her husband refuses to accept it on the day he hears of it, her vow or pledge will be nullified, and the Lord will forgive her. So her husband may either confirm or nullify any vows or pledges she makes to deny herself. But if he does not object on the day he hears of it, then he is agreeing to all her vows and pledges. If he waits more than a day and then tries to nullify a vow or a pledge, he will be punished for her guilt. 
These are the regulations the Lord gave Moses concerning relationships between a man and his wife, between a father and a young daughter who still lives at his home. So the idea around this is, is that when you make a vow, make sure you've got someone in your life that can either say, yes, that's a good idea. I'm going to support you on this or no, not such a good idea. Let's go a different direction. It's just good wisdom. And here's the idea. We've been talking about this throughout the entire book is that the book of Numbers is a nation learning to trust in the Lord. How can this chapter help us to learn to trust in the Lord? And that is that the Lord is going to put people in our life that we can lean on when decisions become necessary. I even think in your life, you may say, no, pastor, I've got no one in my life I can trust. Well, I don't know if I agree with that. I've never met somebody yet, unless they're in like solitary confinement in a prison somewhere, that God has not put people in a peripheral situation in their life. That if you were to invest in that relationship, that you could turn that person into a legitimate friend, that then you could lean on them in times of making decisions. Because God has designed us to do life with others. So what I can trust is, is that God has put people in my life that with time and effort, I can slowly develop a relationship with them that I can bring them on into my life because God wants me to succeed in all the things he has called me to do. So he's going to surround me with people that are going to speak into that and help me to make the right decision. Okay, God's been talking to us. Let's talk to him and then let's read our scripture, scripture together and we'll be done. Father, thank you so much that you are for us and not against us. And that God, there we go through seasons in life when we make decisions, we make declarations, we make vows. Sometimes they are wise, and sometimes we need people that love us enough that can get close to us and can help us maybe make new decisions, maybe steer us in different directions. I pray, God, for the person that's listening to this today. Maybe they're going through a difficult situation and they feel like they're doing life all along. I pray you open their eyes to see that you have strategically placed people in their life that maybe they're not close right now, but they could be. If they would take that step to develop that relationship, and I pray that as they do that, God, that you will open their eyes to see that all around them are people that are waiting to love them and waiting to walk with them in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's word says in Numbers chapter 6, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, talk to us on our discussion, and I will see you tomorrow for Numbers chapter 31. 